morning. And welcome to All Saints Cathedral. It's good to be gathered together today. This morning we are celebrating National Indigenous Day of Prayer. And so we begin and we acknowledge that the land on which we worship is the traditional gathering place of the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Blackfoot, Dene, Sarksi, Soto, Mohawk, and Métis nations. And we commit in both prayer and action to be faithful Treaty 6 partners. I, was, I said to the 9 o'clock congregation, I have been watching and giving thanks for the choke cherry tree that is planted out front of the cathedral. And for those who were here or for those who were not, you will remember that after the TRC, we had choke cherry trees lined up, up and down this aisle. And they were blessed and prayed over, and then they were sent out across the diocese so that each tree, each parish would have a choke cherry tree planted in front of it as a sign and an act of reconciliation. And these trees have been growing and growing with each passing year, as trees do. And so now we have birds who come and eat and nest in that tree. And it will continue to grow and to be medicine for us and change for us. And eventually it will grow so big that it will be used for a peace pipe. And so the symbolism and the beauty of that uh, cannot be lost. We give thanks today for the opportunity for continued reconciliation, continued ability to live differently and in relationship on this land. And so as we begin this morning, we will begin uh, with a prayer and with smudging, and then we will move into the remainder of our service. But we give thanks for this teaching and these prayers that will be offered today.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, from you every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way toward justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning in the 25th verse. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. The heavens declare the Lord. 
The second reading is from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received 
grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is the only Son, himself God, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be pleasing to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Please go ahead and be seated. So today we celebrate and honor the Indigenous people of Canada, the First Nations people, the Métis, the Inuit, and we might be tempted today to turn this day into a day of sorrow as we rightly remember our role as a settler church in the genocide of the indigenous peoples. But this day is not for that. This day is for celebration. Celebration and prayer. Sometimes when we talk about the indigenous peoples of Canada, we emphasize the damage that has been done to them by our colonial ways. This can at time accidentally center us instead of our Indigenous brothers and sisters, because it is good and right that we repent, and even more so that we take tangible steps towards reconciliation. But it is deeply important not only that we repent, but also that we do not solely identify Indigenous people in only in the light of the harm that has been done to them, but that we celebrate with them. We pray with and for them, and we celebrate them as children of the Creator. And so today we celebrate. We celebrate and honor the people who have welcomed us on this land as settlers for generation, or in my case, one generation. 
And when we think back to the diversity of settlers, we think back to the welcome they received. Without the welcome of the indigenous people, they would have surely perished. So this week, I found myself talking with some friends who want to grow a large garden. They feel that might help them be a little more secure from food insecurity. If you are like me, you're looking at grocery prices and thinking, oh my gosh, maybe a large garden's not a bad idea. So this led us to talking about the formation of Canada as we know it. And it reminded me a few years ago, I attended a lecture of a sociologist talking about what is the origin story of Canada? What is the origin story of the prairies? And they took the time to take this idea of pioneer success and they took this and said, it's not necessarily work ethic or pioneering spirit, but what if the real origin story is collaboration? They posed, and I would agree that collaboration is the true origin story of Canada, not without its faults and problems. So I have another friend, a less experienced friend with gardening, and this friend really wanted to start a garden this year. As you probably know by my sermons in the past, I love gardening. And so they decided to plant tomatoes, but they decided to plant them from seed at the end of May, which for those of you who garden, and I can see the smiles, it's just not gonna work. We have such a short growing season here. You have to plant them from seedlings, and while we can kind of laugh at my friend, we can do that because our lives don't depend on our backyard gardens. We don't depend on those for our survival. We know for early settlers in Canada, their very lives depended on the food they could grow, but also their ability to know what native plants they could use to supplement their diet. What native plants could we use for medicine? The survival of our early settlers was due to Indigenous people sharing with them their knowledge that they've gained over thousands of years of life on this land. In the prologue of our Gospel reading, the Gospel of John, we are painted a very vivid picture of independent relationships, sorry, interdependent relationships. The Word, Jesus, was with God, who would create nothing apart from God, and also the word was made known by God. John testified to that word. John didn't know the word Jesus apart from Jesus revealing themselves to John. And these relationships that start the Gospel of John are so important because the Gospel of John is incredibly relational. And our study on it this past year, I think every chapter, our book reminded us, this is again about the interrelationships of God. And we might tend to lose that focus when we read the prologue because it has all this really beautiful philosophical wording. But as we read the rest of the book of John, we realize that the prologue does what any really good prologue does. It tells us what to look for, what to be aware of. It gives us the essence of what is to come. And what is to come in the Gospel of John is the words of Jesus as he attempts over and over and over again to explain to his disciples, to the people, the interdependence of the Trinity, the deep love God has for them and for the whole world, the invitation to be in relationship with a God who came to us. Before settlers arrived on this land, the Spirit of God was here. The Creator spoke to the people on this land. And we see this imprint of the Creator in the welcome and wisdom that was shared and is continued to share with us as settlers. In the very beginning of our relationship, we were invited, invited into relationship by Indigenous peoples whose lives bore a mark of discipleship. Generosity. Generosity is a fruit of the Spirit. And while as settlers we know we did not do a good job of honoring that generosity, we can do better now. We can honor the generosity and the sharing of this land and its wisdom by honoring and being in good relationship with people of this land. Because the people of this land and their generosity have revealed to us the heart of God in being in relationship with us even at times when we threw that relationship back 
back in their face, betraying them and betraying the working of the Spirit of God. And in this way, the indigenous peoples of this land call you and I into discipleship. They call us back into living lives of relationship with one another, with the land. We learn these things through teachings such as the smudge we had this morning and the teachings that are displayed in the back of our chapel, which you can see on your way out. And it might be easy for us today to say, yes, yes, okay, we'll honor the generosity of the spirit and honor that culture, but honor isn't imaginary, it's tangible. To honor is to recognize that we have benefited, we have learned, and it is to respect and to grow and to treasure that knowledge and the people that we are saying that we will honor today, that we will pray for today, give thanks for it today. So today, on the National Indigenous Day of Prayer, how are you and I intentionally learning from the people of this land? How are you and I treasuring them? To learn from somebody and to treasure somebody, you have to know that person, that people group. It's really hard to learn from somebody and treasure them from afar. So today, shortly, we'll be praying the prayers of the people, and I invite you to give thanks at that time for the particular Indigenous peoples of the, this land, for the teachings you have received, for the teachings our parish has received. And if you say maybe, well, I don't actually know, or I haven't really learnt, I encourage you to pray. Make a tangible action today to go out after the service and say, what organizations can I learn from? What teachings can I receive? And I pray that together, not only by honoring and praying today, but that in tangible actions, we will truly be Treaty 6 people. Amen.
us pray together. Let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Linda Nichols, Primate of Canada, for Helen Kennedy, Bishop of the Diocese of Capel. Here in our Diocese of Edmonton, we pray for Stephen London, our Bishop, and for the interim ministry team for St. Mary's in Pinoca. In our sister diocese in Bouye, we pray for the Rasungo Parish, Sever their rector. And here on Treaty 6 land, we give thanks for the Whitefish Lake, First Nation. And on our parish prayer list, we lift up Rebecca, Peggy, Lois, Bob, Vivian, Ben, Anne, Gordon, Janet, and Mary. We pray for Jerry and Debbie, Heather, Kay, Bonnie, Mel, Dale, and Mariko. We lift up Brian, Barb, Tiana, Alexis, Grace, Kira, Richard, Mark, Paul, Liz, Laura, and Mitchell. And today for our prayers of the people, I'll invite you to stand as you are able. Let us turn to the east. The East is the direction from which the new day comes into the world. It is the direction of renewal. It is the place of innocence, guilelessness, spontaneity, joy, and the capacity to believe in the unseen. In the East is the rising sun, the dawn of a new day. As we walk the sacred path of life today, help us, Creator God, to grow in wisdom and strength. We turn to the south. The south is the direction of the sun at its highest point. It is the place of summer, of fullness, of youth, of physical strength and vigor. It is also the time that people work to prepare for the fall and winter months. Hence, symbolically, it is a time of preparing for the future of getting ready for the days ahead. To the south, where new and fresh rains come, we ask your help, gracious creator, to walk in the ways of goodness and gentleness in heart and speech. We turn to the west. The west is the direction from which darkness comes. It is the direction of the unknown, of going within, of dreams, of prayer, and of meditation. The West is a place of testing, where the will is stretched to its outer limits, so that the gifts of perseverance may be won. To the West, the place of the setting sun, we thank you, good and generous God, for our day. We ask forgiveness for the times we caused disharmony today. And we turn to the North. The north is the place of winter, of white snows that remind us of the white hair of our elders. It is the dawning place of true wisdom. Here dwell the teachers of intellectual gifts, symbolized by the great mountain and the sacred lake. Some of the special gifts that await the traveler in the north include the following capacities. To think, to synthesize, to speculate, to predict, to discriminate, to solve problems, to imagine, to analyze, to understand, to calculate, to organize, to criticize, to remember, and to interpret hidden meanings. To the north, we find courage to walk each day and ask your help to overcome fears and anxieties. And now we bend down to touch the Mother Earth, 
And now we stand up and reach up and towards our grandfather who watches over us. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to his table. Let us therefore confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. 
Creator, you bless us with many good gifts. Return to you from your creation. Feed us with the bread of life, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do so in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
We break this body, bread to share in the body of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Great Creator, you have fed us with bread from heaven. Continue to renew us in your truth, to give light to our minds, strength to our bodies, and seal us with your Holy Spirit. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.